Hello everybody, this is Fernando for the latest Cryptids and Monsters video. I'm doing this Cryptids of the Week uh, video a little earlier than usual. Normally I would do it on Friday, but I'm anticipating working on your other suggestions towards the weekend. So I wanted to get this in early for you all, and it is a good one. And again, the whole basis of this is I'm picking out whatever random page cryptids.wikia.com suggests. And this one, by sheer coincidence, follows the theme of my last Cryptids and Monsters uh, Cryptid of the Week video. And what I mean is this, it is also an item that turned out to be fake. Something that was created for the sole purpose of trying to create money. Just like the Hardrachos that I just talked about the other day, uh, this particular item it is also the same thing fascinating stuff quite a coincidence that this was done and in this case I'm talking about the cryptid known as the Cardiff giant and you'll see a picture of it here and basically it's this it was a fake item that was created for the sole purpose of generating money but there was also an ulterior motive, kind of like getting back an idea of revenge, if you will, for from one person to another. So here's how the story goes. You have to go back to about the 1800s or so, and this was around 1858 to 1869. The exact date as to when this monster was created is not there, but it's generally around that period that this occurred. And this is what happened. There was a verbal altercation between two gentlemen, a guy by the name of George Hull, who was an atheist. Uh, for those of you who don't know, an atheist is somebody who does not believe in anything involving God. And then with a minister, a gentleman by the name of Mr. Turk. And he was someone that proclaimed that because there was a passage in Genesis, um, the Bible, the chapter there that states that there were no giants who once lived the earth, then Mr. Hull was, fine, was trying to say yes, there were. Like he wanted to have something that could prove to the minister that yes, the Bible is wrong, there were giants on the earth, there you go, the Bible is wrong. And this is how he did it. I mean, this is why I was talking earlier about revenge because this guy wow the time and the patience that he put into this particular hoax it is amazing shortly after that altercation he hired two men or he hired one man actually but it involved several other men afterward he hired some men to actually carve out a 10 foot long 4 foot 5 inch block of gypsum there in Iowa and he originally told that man uh, that it was actually going to be for a monument of Abraham Lincoln. So if you're scratching my head, if you're scratching your head already and like I was and I was thinking, how do you have one man carve out something like this and not, you know, be essentially mystified as to the purpose of this? Well, if you told them it's actually going to be a monument for Abraham Lincoln, then it makes much more sense. So that's why he hired this man to do it. They spent that time. It probably would have taken several months to do so. But they carved out a 10 foot long mummified looking piece of gypsum that as you'll see the picture there. Then he shipped the block all the way to Chicago where he hired yet another person to carve it more into the likeness of a man. And in this case, they added stains, they added acids, they beat the actual statue uh, that you see there to make it look like um, holes were originating within the statue over time. They did everything they could to make it look like it was something far, far older than just recently created. And the time and effort, again, to do this, because this statue was not tiny, 10 foot long, and you'll see, this, uh, you, you'll see the size of it compared to some of the other people there. This would have taken a monumental work just to get this done, but they did it. They were able to do it, and Hole had this man who helped him now carve it into a much more likeness of an actual human being, having him swore that this would that this secret would just be between them. But it didn't stop there. 
now he had the the statue shipped to another location it was actually towards a farm there in cardiff new york that is why it is called the cardiff giant because that's the location that it was found at and he hired yet two other men so one by the name of gideon emmons and another one by the name of henry nichols bury this this uh, statue behind the well located there in the home of a guy by the name of William C. Stubb Noel. So this guy Noel was apparently in on it with Hull in terms of this hoax. Cut to a year later. Yes, one full year later. The hoax is still being planned. So again, the patience tied to this. It, it was There was the altercation between Hull and the minister. And then cut to several months later where this statue was created. Then it was shipped to another town where it was uh, sharpened and it was um, a stonecutter there cut it more to the likeness of an actual man. And then finally it was shipped to Cardiff, New York where it was buried and then buried for one full year. And then finally he had those same two men bring up the giant um, as if they found it as if miraculously they were doing something there near that well and they came across this giant and then he had one of them declare I declare some old Indian has been buried here no doubt doing this in front of a large crowd by that point so the entirety of this hoax would have taken over a year that's the time and patience that this guy Hull had I mean he was and he was really into making sure that this minister would be proven wrong. Yes, he would have proven wrong with a lie, at least in the case of this hoax. But he was not somebody that was going to get back down by this minister and the minute he did that it attracted a huge crowd so much so that Noel the other guy again that was in on it the the owner of that well where they found this giant um, he started charging people 25 cents for the ability to see it and then there was such an increase of demand that he even raised it to 50 cents and it was still not enough there was not enough uh, time to have all these people come by and see the Cardiff Giant and again they were paying 50 cents so much so that it actually attracted the attention of a very famous person uh, by the name of P.T. Barnum you might have heard him of course with his circus the remnants of the circus that travel around the US um, he was so interested in this particular piece that he offered both Noel and Hull sixty thousand dollars for a three-month lease that's how much um, interest there was in this giant to give you an idea using the inflation calculator and again these calculator can only go back to the early 1900s if people were paying 50 cents for each ticket it would probably be roughly around 12 to 15 dollars in today's dollars 12 to 15 dollars just to see this giant and then you have P.T. Barnum offering sixty thousand dollars at that time using the inflation calculator that comes to today at least over one and a half million dollars crazy isn't it what started out as a hoax has now turned into a huge opportunity for these two guys Noel and Hull they're all in on it of course when it comes to the hoax these two guys but they're not gonna let that secret go out anytime soon they're in it uh, if, if, if they were originally in it to try to get one on this minister it suddenly turned into this gigantic money-making opportunity but even with the equivalent of one and a half million dollars offered to them they said no can you believe that they turned down P.T. Barnum and when that happened P.T. Barnum actually went behind them and did something very sneaky on his own what he did is he hired yet another person on his end on his side and they covertly were able to sneak in somehow into the area that this giant was being held in and they were able to create a wax shape of the entire 10 foot carving and were able to cr use it to create a plaster replica that way they in turn created their own hoax like they used that plaster replica to fill in with their own material 
they created their own 10 foot giant and then cut to a little while later and then P.T. Barnum being the showman that he is he suddenly announced to everyone I have the real um, Cardiff giant these other guys do not and that's when all of a sudden the tails turned and there were two Cardiff giants purporting to be real with P.T. Barnum stating that his which he used by sneakily um, you know going in probably in the dead of night and stealing a, a copy of the Cardiff giant and then you have Noel and the other guy whole for using their hoax as trying to proclaim it as theirs being the real one isn't this crazy I mean, when I saw this story I was so glad I came upon this on the random page because this happened in real life there's a movie that could be made about this I mean, here you have two gentlemen running two hoaxes both of them trying to capitalize on the interest of all the people that are willing to pay upwards of $15 a ticket just to see these two giants when they were all fake finally somehow some way um, either they started suing each other but it ended up being and uh, taken to court and that's where finally the two men P.T. Barnum and then the other two guys uh, Newell and Hulf had to say in court that yes both of their giants were fake they were hoaxes none of them were real one was stolen from the other one was done as a lie uh, or a hoax to try to get one on a minister and interestingly enough people by that point were apparently suing Barnum for stating that his was the real deal but somehow some way he was able to convince the judge that early on he said his giant was already a fake so you can't sue somebody uh, for being f for for saying something is fake if the owner is already saying that they were fake so he was able to get off fascinating isn't it this tale of the Cardiff giant it's a completely fake completely made up cryptid never existed it was done for the sole purpose of of getting one on a minister uh, but it turned into such a huge money making uh, process that um, little that P.T. Barnum was able to get in and that's where it took on a whole other turn by the way the status of that coffin was that apparently some publisher somewhere in Iowa had to have it and it was sold later on to him um, and eventually ended up in some museum where it's still there on display if you're in Cooperstown, New York, or if you're near, near and around that area, and you know that that Cardiff Giant is there, uh, please post it or um, try to see, uh, because uh, that's where it's located. And then P.T. Barnum's own giant, his own Cardiff Giant, ended up in display in some place called Farmington Hills, Michigan, in uh, Marvin's Marvelous Mechanical Museum. Uh, interesting name, uh, but that's the museum where P.T. Barnum's own Cardiff Giant is located now. So these two hoaxes, even to this day, cut to about uh, you know good 100 plus years later, they're still around. They're still here in the U.S., both in separate locations, both available to view. So very, very fascinating stuff. Great story. Uh, I'm glad I came across this particular um, so cryptid based on the random page suggestion and I'm very glad to share it with everybody here if anyone else has any other stories tied to the Cardiff Giant stuff that's as crazy as this um, any other examples maybe some stuff regarding the actual court um, whatever was settled in terms of the court case please post them below share your comments it'd be great to hear that information so alright everybody thanks again as always take care